All right, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be making a hint particle and then we're gonna discuss the logic behind how we're going to be able to give the player a hint. So our finished product is going to be used in a way that we haven't done before. We're not gonna be using a particle node, although we could, and we're not gonna be using an animated effect, although we could. Instead, we're gonna be using two tween nodes that are set to play on a loop. So. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and let's, uh, let's get right in there. So today we're going to start off by making an effect for what our hint is going to be. Now I've already shown you how you can make different effects using an animation node, using a particle node, and then today I'm going to show you how you can make an animation effect using a tween node. And then we're going to discuss the basics of how our hint system is going to work. And next time we'll finish it off. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to open up a new scene. And I want this new scene to have a node 2D as its main node. As a child of this node 2D, I'm going to add two different things. First, I'm going to add a sprite. And then I'm going to add, also as a child of the main node, a tween node. And I'm actually going to need two of these. So one is going to be to change the size, so I'm going to call this size tween, and then I'll duplicate that and I'll call the second one a color tween. So the effect I'm looking for is I want when there's a hint, so like, let me show you in the game here, um, and I want if, like say for example, if this piece can move, I want something very subtle telling the, the viewer to look here. So after a few seconds, we'll have a timer that will start as soon as we refill. And when that timer um, finishes, it's gonna create a hint particle, or not particle, a hint effect where they can move. And essentially we're gonna be storing all the possible moves and then we'll just choose one at random. So I want something that's gonna go uh, kind of right where this goes and it's just gonna be another version of it that just gets slowly larger and dimmer. So it gets, you know, essentially twice its size and then fades out and then back in and then back out. So it's kind of like this, this pulsing. Uh, Candy Crush, I think, has the pieces wiggle a little bit. And we could do that by adding a wiggle function to the piece itself. And then when we decide which hint we want to activate, we could call that wiggle function on that piece. And then as soon as the player touches the board, I want to destroy that effect because they've already decided where they want to go. And then, again, after everything refills, we'll wait a little bit. So I want something that looks just like this piece that expands and gets more transparent. So I'm going to rename this to my hint effect. All right. And now for my sprite, just so I can visualize something in the world, I'm going to have this be one of my, um, one of the textures I already have for my scenes. And I just want to open up really quickly here. I want to make sure one thing. So I'm opening up my green piece because I want to make sure, I think I set the transform, I did. I set the scale of all my pieces on just the sprite, not the main node, to be half. And so I'm going to have to do that on this hint effect as well. So I'm going to go to my art and inside art, I'm going to go to pieces and I'm just going to grab one of my pieces at random here. Uh, might as well just be the green one because I like green, but I'm going to change this in code. And then I'm going to make sure that the sprite and not the main node has a transform scale of 0 0.5, 0 0.5. All right, cool. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so I can see this better. Now, what I want to happen is I want it to be created. And then, like I said, one, teen, one tween node is going to control the size. So we're going to make it from, say, a fraction of its size to twice its size. And the other tween node is going to control its, uh, it's going to take it from being uh, like it is now to being transparent. And then also, once the tweens are completed, we're just going to run them again. So I'm going to go to my hint effect here. I'm going to create a new script. New script. And I'm going to save this in my scripts folder. Call it hint effect. And create. So I'm going to make a reference to a few things right away here. Now these references could be done by using dollar sign the name of the node that's the child. Uh, I've been mixing it up 
between videos. Some videos I'll do that. Other videos I'll use something called an on ready variable. If you're going to create a reference to a node, though, that's a child, because of the way that Godot can spawn things in, you want to make sure that you're doing it as an on ready var and not just a regular var. So, for example, if I were to do var this sprite is equal to dollar sign sprite, <coughs> Godot will give me an error. Uh, on ready var this sprite or git node instead. Um, and you don't have to have it equal to git node, we can do that dollar, sti dollar sign. And that's because of the script execution order. So uh, I'm going to do it as on ready var this sprite is equal to dollar sign sprite. And then that red line should go away. And I'm going to make the same reference to the two tweens. So on ready var size tween equals dollar sign size tween and on ready var color tween equal to dollar sign color tween all right cool now what i want to do is i want a function that is going to assign the sprite to be whatever i want it to be so when i create that sprite or when i send a signal to create that that sprite, I want to have a function that will give it whatever sprite I want, so it won't always be the green piece. So I'm going to create a function here that I'm going to call setup. So function setup, and setup is going to take a parameter, and that parameter is the sprite that we want to use. I'm going to call this new sprite. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say this sprite dot texture is equal to new sprite and I'm going to have another function here to call what the tween nodes are going to do. So I'm going to call this function um, slowly larger. This is not a great name for it but whatever. So slowly larger is going to access that size tween. So I'm going to say size tween and I need to change the interpolation properties on it. Interpolate property. And this has seven arguments. I know we've already used a tween, but it was like way back in part five or something like that. So I want this to be on myself. So on the node 2D that's holding everything. Actually, not on self. On this sprite. And I want to... Um, property I want to change, which is going to be the scale. So in quotations, scale. The initial value I'm going to say is vector 2, 1, 1. The new value is going to be vector 2, 2, 2. The amount of time I want it to take. I want this to be long. I want it to be a slow pulse, so I'm going to put this as 3. Then the kind of tween I want. And there's a lot that you can read into these tweens. I'm going to go with something that, uh, let's go with sign, because it, sign will start fast, but then get slower the closer it gets to its value. And then the type of easing I want, I want it to be just ease out and not ease in. And then that's it. Those are the seven arguments. Then I'm going to call size tween dot start. So I'm going to call that from setup as well. So slowly larger. And I can get rid of these pass uh, statements now. And then I'm going to create another function I'm going to call slowly dimmer. So slowly larger function slowly dimmer. And this is going to take the color tween. So color tween dot interpolate property. And I want it to work on this sprite. I want it to change its, so it's not called the color property, it's called the modulate property. Modulate. And I want to start at vector four. Actually, I think it's a color in here. Yep, it's a color. And these color values, um, if you're used to seeing color values from zero to 255, in this case, they're from zero to one. So if a color value were, say, uh, 122.5, I know it can't be that, but if it were, it would be represented by 0.5. So if you have a color you like, you need to make sure that you're changing them from their 255 values into 
percentage values of 255. So I just want this to be straight white, fully opaque. So 1, 1, 1, 1, uh, red, green, blue, and alpha. And my final value is going to be color, 1, 1, 1, so fully white. And I'm going to go, say, 0 0.2 for not quite fully opaque. I'm going to have this take three seconds as well. I'm going to use sine, and it's going to be an ease out function. All right, cool. Then I'm going to call color tween dot start, and I'll get rid of this pass function, and I'll call the color tween from setup as well. So slowly dimmer. Oops. Um, all right, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to save this scene. So save scene in the scenes folder, save. Now, I don't want to actually look at my game window. I just want to look at the hint effect. So uh, I'm going to go to my hint effect, and I'm going to hit this play button here. It's going to appear in the upper corner, but we should see it get bigger and smaller. So let's try this out. Oh, aha, I wasn't calling it from on ready. So back in my script here. In ready, I'm going to call setup. And that's something I'm going to have to change later because I don't want to call setup twice. Um, so this is something that I'll have to remove from ready. So I'm going to save that again. And let's play just this scene. Oh, I need to tell it what sprite to use. And the sprite I'm going to use is this sprite dot texture. So I want it to use the current sprite it has just so for display purposes. So I'll hit play. Slowly bigger. But then as soon as it gets as big as it is, it stops. What we want is when it gets to the end of its tween, we want it to restart itself. So I'm going to make a couple of signals here from the size tweens. I'm going to go to node, tween completed. I'm going to connect that to hint effect. I'm going to do the same thing for color tween. Tween completed, connect hint effect. And then when the size tween is completed, I want to call that slowly larger again. Slowly larger. And when the color tween is completed, I want to call slowly dimmer. There we go. I'm going to save this. Um, and let's see. We should get this nice pulsing effect. So there we go. Now, if we had a piece underneath that, it should look like that one piece is getting bigger and bigger and kind of drawing attention to it. So let me just show you what it'll look like on the screen. So I'm going to zoom out here and I want to grab the whole hint effect. I don't want to grab the sprite or any of the tweens. So with hint effect highlighted, I'm going to go over here and choose this option. I don't even know how to describe this, but make sure that you're only selecting the root node. So grab this. I'm going to pull it into the middle of the scene. Uh, and then I'm going to make another child here. And that's going to be just another sprite. So you can see what the effect should look like. The sprite is going to go, <coughs> pardon me, behind there. And I'm going to set that sprite to be the same tile that we're looking at, which is the green piece. I'm just doing this for, um, so you guys can see what it's going to look like. So I want to go 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Five. I'm going to remove that sprite. I'm going to recenter this in just a second, but I'm going to save this for now and let's play this scene and let's see what our effect would look like. Maybe that's a little too big and maybe it's a little too long. Let's try like, let's go back in here. You can do, like, there's all kinds of stuff you can do to mess with this. Um, I'm going to make this take two seconds instead of three for both of them. And then I'm going to make it go instead of two, two, let's do like 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. Save that. And let's try it now. Yeah, it's not too bad. Could be better, but this is a third way that we can use to make effects. All right, so next time, we're going to be doing our actual logic of this. But before I sign off, I want to delete that second sprite because I don't want that there. 
uh, delete node. Yep. And then my hint effect, I'm going to put its transform back to zero, zero. Cool. Now next time we're going to be calling this hint effect from our grid object after we decide what our our hint is going to be, what our, our hinted match is. And you can make it so that players only get hints if they enable something or use a power up if you wanted to. But there we go. If you couldn't tell, I'm, I've been pretty sick this week. Uh, I work with children, so, well, youths. I work with youths, so I often, like, maybe three or four times a school year I get sick, so that's why the videos are a little bit off schedule. I'll try to get the schedule updated sometime today, but, yeah. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord. Uh, tons of really cool people there. I'm usually quicker to answer Discord than I am to answer YouTube comments, but either way, if you try to get a hold of me, I, I think I've answered every comment. I might have missed a couple, but I think I've gotten them all. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Thank you very much for watching, and have yourselves a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.